Amazing. Hey y'all, good morning, good afternoon, and uh, good night for people across the world who are in different time zones. I am so excited about today. Hey, hey, Gagan8206. Um, I'm so excited about today because we have a very special guest, uh, Olivia Jordan, Miss USA 2015. Uh, and then let me move, mute this over here. 2015, I'm so excited. She is incredible. She's one of my Miss USA sisters. And I remember watching her when she competed both at Miss USA 2015 and at Miss Universe. So thrilled that she's going to be joining us. And I'm just waiting for the connection. Hi. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, hi. Good morning. <laughs> How, are How are you? you? Good. I was gonna say, I feel like I have to say good morning because it's 9 a.m. your time, right? Oh, yeah. It's not, yeah, sorry, I forgot. How is the <laughs> afternoon treating you? <laughs> <laughs> good so far, you know, still alive. Got I'm a little ring light here, so I feel lit up and happy. You look glowing. Ditto, girl. Oh, my gosh. Oh, this natural cute. lighting on you. It's gorgeous. <laughs> Thank per you. usual. <laughs> So I was telling everybody, obviously, you know, people on here know that you're Miss USA 2015, um, second runner up at Miss Universe 2015. And I remember watching you in both competitions and just being in awe. Like, oh I remember because 2015 was the year that um, there was a lot of controversy. They ended up moving the pageant from television to a different network. And so I remember watching from my room in Detroit, Michigan because I was doing an internship then. And I just remember being like, oh my God, she's amazing. I remember watching you answer your top five question. Um, oh and gosh. I remember both of them. And I remember <laughs> uh, your giant uh, pink gown. It's just like, this was the right choice. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just, it was so much fun. And I'm so glad that you're joining us here this morning. Thanks for having me, girl. I appreciate you. Yeah, absolutely. So there were tons of questions that people sent in. We posted about this. We asked people to send in questions. And obviously, guys, if you have more questions, um, drop them in the question box below. It's the little box that has a question mark on it because it's so much easier to sort through you guys' questions that way. Otherwise, like, your questions just end up floating in the chat into oblivion. I never see them. So. I didn't know this. You're teaching me all the, the things. <laughs> I, I seriously love the question box. And what's funny is the first time I actually saw it was on Mia Sanchez's, uh, one of her lives, because like her live, it like had a different color. And I was like, it's blue. And, and then it said Q&A. I was like, what is this? <laughs> went on. And he was like, drop your questions in the question box. And I was like, I fancy. Know. Yeah, very fancy. <laughs> um, so so but before we get to those questions, there are obviously a ton of questions people had about um, both of our experiences at Miss Universe, both of our experiences at Miss USA, and then some sort of behind the scenes looks at just competing yeah. in pageants generally. So I wanna start with just talking about our experiences at Miss USA. Um, so yeah, you were right. Miss Oklahoma USA. What did it feel like when you got to the competition and were ready to start? Oh my gosh. Well, I mean, as you already said, it was a bizarre year. We When we got there was when we found out we were pulled from NBC. Oh, no. um, it was a little chaotic. But um, just those feelings of being able to represent your state. And Paula Shugart came out and was like, guys, the, pad the show must go on. Like, this is going to happen. <laughs> We've been around for a long time. We have gotten through hard things before, and we're going to get through this. And that encouragement and that female leadership, I just was like, yes, I, I'm a part of this. I want to be working with Paula every day. So yeah, it was all the feels. Yeah, it's so cool. And I was like, I was looking at, I was looking through the competition and remembering like, you know, who competed, um, what, what everybody did while they were there. And I was looking at your judges. And that's when I remembered that like, there were a ton of Miss USA's and Miss Universes and then Miss Teen USA that like banded together and they were like, we're going to help. We're going to judge. Like, that was so cool. It was honestly the biggest honor because like, like you're saying, w before you compete, you're obviously looking to the people before you on like what their journey was like and what this job is like. And not that you're like comparing yourself, but just you're learning from, <laughs> from those that have come before you and to stare down at the judges and be like, these are literally the women that I've been looking up to for years that I have watched on stage that I've watched do these questions. It, I felt the most supported and loved coming from them, not just to me, but to all of the women on stage because they know how hard it is to be in those shoes. And it was, yeah, surreal. 
Yeah. Well, and I think we all got a glimpse of the sisterhood that that you sort of join when you compete in the Miss Universe organization. And that was thrilling to see. Um, yeah. So so that was really exciting. One of the questions we got, and it's something I would love to hear too, is the story behind selecting your pink gown at Miss USA 2015. Because it was iconic. It was completely memorable. It was it's one of those dresses that you're like, that dress was so cool. <laughs> um, before I won Miss USA, I had modeled in New York um, Fashion Week for Sherry Hill. So um, just, she was like, at that point, my Oklahoma homegirl. I just... <laughs> looked up to her so much and I felt like just the Oklahoma connection. I was like, Sherry, whatever you want, like guide me. I am your <laughs> <laughs> I am your Barbie doll dress. Yeah. <laughs> but so I knew I wanted to wear Sherry Hill without a doubt. And mm -hmm. when I went to her showroom, um, I tried on a bunch of things and I kept sort of like pulling this thing off the rack and I was like, is this weird that I'm gravitating towards this? <laughs> and when I put it on everyone in the room was like, yeah, you're going to wear that. That's, that's the one. <laughs> yeah. And it was perfection. And I don't think like everybody can pull that off, but you certainly did. Maybe you look incredible. Like your figure looked great. And like, I feel like I usually have to stay away from ball gowns because they make me look so short, but like you looked incredible. Your proportions were perfect. It like you lit up the stage. And so I yeah. loved watching that. Like I, I feel like a pageant fan right now. Just oh my like, God, I love it. <laughs> it was so cool. It really was. It really did. Oh my was. gosh. Um, so another one of the questions that we got was sharing something. This, is, this question is actually from Nia Sanchez. She says, can you share something that most people might not know about being Miss USA? I think one of the hard things about being Miss USA is it can be really lonely. And it's not like a fun fact, but it is the reality. <laughs> it's like mm -hmm. you're in this position that pretty much only like the 60 plus women that have come before you have been in those similar shoes. And there are some days that are really hard. There are some days you're exhausted and it's not you're you're in this place of gratitude and like wanting to do the most you possibly can with your year mm -hmm. that you never want to complain. But that can be kind of isolating like you to your friends and family, you want to be like, yeah, everything's great. And in some ways it is, but also in some ways you're like, and I'm exhausted and <laughs> I'm burnt out and I have n haven't controlled my schedule in a year. <laughs> I'm like mm -hmm. on someone else's timeline. <laughs> so though balancing that is a challenge for sure. Yeah, I completely agree. And one of the things I realized after winning and like serving as Miss USA for a while is like people forget that like you're a real person. Like, yeah. there are people who will comment on my social media. Like, there are some, you know, just trolls. There are other people who are super positive and so encouraging. And I think there are some people who, like, will leave comments as if I'm not reading them. Like, they'll leave comments yeah. on my personal page and be like, wow, she looks really pretty in this dress. And I'm like, why wouldn't you say, like, you're really pretty? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. it's, it sort of reminds you, like, they really don't think that I'm a real person. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that can be, that can be challenging for sure. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But like you said, you know, there's so much, I think all of us have so much gratitude and are just very Wonderful. grateful and happy to be here. Um, yes. But, you know, there's, there's another side to it that you also don't see. Right. Yeah. yeah, and I think because everyone sees the highlight reel, then we can forget to talk about the other piece. So that's why I bring it up. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Yep, yeah. I totally agree. Couldn't agree more. <laughs> okay, so there was another question that said, what are some of the positive highlights from your reign? And it's always like, people always ask me like, so what's the coolest thing you've ever done? I'm like, I can't tell you just one. There's so many things. So, so any number of things like your top three, your top two, your top one, were like the highlights. Okay. My, um, top three was just the, the, after I won the crown, getting off that plane and just when I was in New York, after I finished my whole first day, I just walked the city. I just walked for hours. And in retrospect, probably not the safest thing, but I just walked and walked and walked like hours. And I was like, I live here. I live in New York. It just was like this childhood dream coming true. Um, so surreal. Number two was meeting Oprah. I fangirled out. I was not cool. I was not normal. I was, I didn't know how to speak. I didn't know what to do with my hands or my body. Where did you meet her? Tell me about this. I got to go to a premiere of, um, it was like early on in um, her, the Oprah Winfrey network, and she was leading the premiere of Believe, um, I believe is the name of the show. And I just was excited to be in the audience and hear her speak. 
But then afterwards, there was this little cocktail hour for the 100 people. And she was in the room. And it was like, the wind got like, sucked out of the room when she walked in. Like we all were like, oh, like the oh, Oprah effect. Yeah. <laughs> I die. Um, and then third top moment was going to the Philippines because they are truly the greatest pageant fans in the world. And like, living with Pia and getting to go um, just see her in her element and be I, a privy to that. Like it was the most, it was phenomenal. It was, it was pageants on steroids. It was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> when did you go? What were you in the Philippines for? I got to judge uh, Miss Philippines. Oh, so that that's so cool. Beanie Beanie. Uh, oh, that, yeah. that would have been amazing. It was wild. Yeah, that is awesome. Well, it's so funny. That, it's so funny that you say that meeting Oprah was one of like your top three. I always put that in my top three. Like, because and you're right. It's like the Oprah effect. Like when she walks in, I remember I, I was interviewing her when she was on another tour for um, for Extra, and yeah. I remember like we're sitting in this auditorium, this giant arena, waiting for her to come in, and we're asking like one of the one of the PR people, like, you know, do you know when she's going to be here? And they're like, uh, 10, 15 minutes, but you'll know. And I was like, what does that mean? Like, I'm asking people, like, what, is, what does that mean? I'll know. And, and all of a sudden, like, 15 minutes or so later, like, uh, I'm looking at one of my producers, and I was like, what's, what's that? What's going on? And you just, there's, there's this feeling. And so there's I look over, and I'm like, Oprah's here. <laughs> It's one of those things, yeah. Yeah, it's craziness. But it's really, really cool. It's really cool that she has that effect on people. Oh my gosh, it's so inspiring. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I totally agree. Okay, so uh, somebody asked, this is a really great question. How did you use Miss USA as a networking opportunity for your own career? Ooh, I think for me, just at that time, um, Instagram was kind of like a brand new world. It had only been around for a few years. So I really capitalized on that and, and grew my Instagram to, um, at that time, what I thought was large. Um, and <laughs> it's still large and, now. <laughs> and help and like helped grow the Miss USA. We, I, I was in the world where we used to control all the content on the Miss USA page as well. So, um, that was like kind of a, big job for me at that time. And um, I think that was a huge part of my networking that I, uh, I didn't realize the opportunities in social media until that year. And I was like, Oh my gosh, this, I've been an actor and a model for a year, but for years, but I can have my portfolio and my real and my personality slate, just basically all in one place. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Yeah, well, that's really cool. And I feel like it, it certainly must have helped you. I mean, obviously, you've got a huge following now it helped you to learn and figure out things on your own. And then sort of use that for your own success afterwards. Yeah, yeah, totally. So yeah. grateful. Yeah, for sure. Okay, I'm going through, oh, this is a really good question. Somebody asked this. All right, so Miss Alabama Earth says, how do you handle any anxiety or nervousness during the competition? That's a good question. I personally um, meditate before going on stage. So um, that's my main thing to try to just like get my breathing under control. I do grounding exercises where I feel my feet on the floor. Um, most of the time they're in my shoes because like it grows backstage. But <laughs> just just the practice of um, feeling that connection to earth, even if you're in your shoes, mm -hmm. is really grounding for me and helps sort of calm that nerve. What do you do? Um, I do. So I always feel like nervous jitters or like little butterflies. So I end up having to just move around a lot, whether that's like, like I'll be like singing a song in my head and like, oh, yes. yeah. Just like I remember when we were backstage at Miss Universe, they were playing, I think they were playing Beyonce backstage. And so we were like, Amazing. yes, Beyonce. And yes. so I've looked at like just moving around and trying to get my mind off of what's about to happen, like helps me to just get those nervous jitters out so I can walk on stage and not feel it. It's really cool. Really For sure. <laughs> Speaking of Miss Universe, a lot of people had a ton of questions about both of our experiences competing at Miss Universe, uh, because obviously it's one of those huge things that you get to do as Miss USA. Um, one person asked, what was the funniest experience that you had at Miss Universe? Um, I don't know if this is funny. I mean, there's, <laughs> no, this is a long time ago for me. I don't remember. But there was one moment that um, I don't know if people know, but at Miss Universe, they're all the girls, you're with your roommate in your hotel room. But then at the end of the hall, there's always like a hotel suite where everyone can go and hang out. And there's like tea in there and sometimes treats and whatever. 
So we would all like go and have downtime there. It was the only time during that two week process that no one's taking pictures. No one's like, you're just totally relaxed. Mm -hmm. And when we were in there, one of the girls was like, how old are you? And I was like 27. And she was like, I just can't imagine being 27 and still wanting to be a pageant queen. She was like, <laughs> she was like don't you want like kids and to get married? God, I hope that I'm like married with kids by your age. And I was just like, my like mind was like, wait, wait. And I was like, no, sweet, beautiful girl. Like you have so much life ahead of you. You can be a pageant queen. You can have a million other career aspirations. You do not have to hurry. There is plenty <laughs> of time for mm -hmm. the wedding, the babies, all the things. No rush. Yeah. <laughs> so that's sort of funny. <laughs> that is so funny. Well, because you said you were 27 at that time, right? I think so. Yeah, 27. Okay. So um, uh, <laughs> I remember when I, so when I was 27, I was still a state title holder. I was Miss North Carolina, USA. And I went and spoke at my uh, my my high school um, that I graduated from. And I remember talking to this group of kids, and they were asking me a bunch of questions. Somebody was like, "How old are you?" And I was like, "27." They're like, "Wow!" <laughs> like, as if they've never met a twenty-seven-year-old before. So, fun fact, guys, and Olivia, correct me if I'm wrong here. Okay, so I think before I won, you were the oldest Miss USA to have won the title and then Nana Merriweather was the oldest person to hold the title. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so, so you guys are talking to like the two oldest people to win the title of Miss USA. Oh, yeah. There's so much ageism but I think that you're right that like you know just because you're 27 or 28 or 30 or 40 doesn't mean that you can't go and chase your dreams and do what you actually want to do. Like your age shouldn't stop you. Um, and I think like reaching the age of 20, I'm 29 now, I'm reaching that age and reflecting back on who I was at 21. Like, I, I don't think that I would have like, I wouldn't have known anything at 21. I was so immature at 21. Not no, I'm, so, I'm so glad I won when I did, because mm -hmm. like, if I would have won my first pageant when I was like 22 or 23, what, however old, I forget. But I... I wouldn't have done what I did with my year. I wouldn't have appreciated it as much. So I think a, mm -hmm. there's a lot of good that comes with the age. Honestly. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And that doesn't mean you can't win if you're younger too. It's just like no, I no, no, no. When I was that young, and I was like, I didn't have any idea what I was doing. I saw, I saw a meme a while ago that said, "How are people having children at my age? I am children." Like, yeah, like, there's some days where I'm still waiting. I still call my mom. Yeah, <laughs> like mom, I have no idea what to do with this decision. Please help me. Yeah. Um, so that actually is really, really funny. Okay, so uh, somebody asked, what was the biggest struggle each of you faced competing at Miss Universe? What was yours? I would say that I think um, some of the pressure that you get from fans sometimes can mm -hmm. be a little overwhelming. And I think that's something that I've been pretty good at controlling. But I, I, rem I got a message yesterday that actually reminded me of it. And I was like debating about whether or not to share it. But I'm like, huh, why not? We're on live. It'll be fine. Um, so uh, like overwhelmingly, people just want to help you. And I think people just want to share their opinions because they want to, you know, be an aide or guide you or whatever. And then there are other people who are just like negative trolls all the time. And so I think at Miss Universe and Miss USA is when things like sort of ramp up a little bit. And it's just exhausting sometimes mm -hmm. to constantly get messages um, from people, especially if they're negative messages. So I got this message yesterday um, from somebody uh, who responded to like the little question answer thing that I, that I um, posted. It, I'm reading this off literally. How much did you pay to win the competition because you were the ugliest there? And guys, I have to say that like the number of like negative messages that you get during competitions or even after competitions, like doesn't stop. Like I remember when I won, there were people who would put throw up faces under my pictures. Um, there were people who send me messages and ask me like, why don't you jump off the building or kill yourself? I'm like, guys, like we really have to stop this. So I hope I say that to say two things. Number one, um, I hope if you're receiving those kinds of messages, know that a lot of us do. And that doesn't make them any better, but you have to remember that some of those people um, are really just hurt or negative people who want to hurt other people. Like misery loves company and hurt people hurt people. So don't take those messages to heart. It can be easy sometimes to feel overwhelmed by them, but try not to take those messages um, to heart. And two, just know that if you are getting those messages, just look at the positives and look at the people 
um, who are excited about you and people who are being encouraging and help that, yeah. let that just help to motivate you. So I would say that was one of the things where I was like, guys, like, chill out, calm down. <laughs> and I don't know if this is encouraging at all, but I, the stuff that I received in my inbox, like, would make you nauseous during my Miss USA and Miss Universe life and, um, or, you know, competing. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I passed the crown girl, those, they fell off. Like people mm -hmm. stopped hating. And it, it was the most clear indication that like people really do, it really hurts people that are scared to go after their own dreams or in their own pain about themselves to see someone else have that courage and go after their dreams and have those things. So I, it's just like the irony of like, if you're getting bullied, it's probably because you're doing something right. It's probably because mm -hmm. you're doing something great. Yeah. And so to sort of try to keep that perspective, which is so hard to do in the moment. And I was not great at it during my year. Like it was it's really hard, hard to, to go down. Yeah. 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 It's really hard to, especially when you feel so overwhelmed about that. It's hard to like look past, you know, the, that one negative message to the 50 that you got. Um, yeah. But it's just like, yo, what did I do to you? Did I like yeah. step on your puppy's like foot or something? Like who would deserve, you know, getting yes. messages like that? Nobody does. So I got like, guys, I hope that I hope you guys are hearing us and know that like Miss oh. USA's get it all the time. People get it all the time. And mm. um, it's unfortunate. I hope that if you see like any of your friends or family members, um, you know, sending negative comments or messages, you'll speak to them and be like, look, let's talk about this. Cause this is no <laughs> <Yeah>. point. <laughs> and, and okay. positive. There's no point. And also yeah. in, to that end, like, don't follow people that trigger you. Don't mm -hmm. you make your, everyone you follow, make it a beautiful page that excites you. Definitely follow people with different thoughts and opinions and that look differently than you. And that study different things than you and have different religions. Like that is great because it's great to expand our consciousness, but mm. don't follow people that make you feel bad about yourself in any way. Like yep. even I have to unfollow some of my girlfriends that are models because I'm like, girl, when <laughs> I see you in real life, I remember that you're a real person. But when I see your abs every day, I can't handle it. <laughs> it makes me feel bad. No, I don't mm -hmm. follow you, but I love yeah. you. I love the person that you are. And like, <laughs> when I want to see what you're doing, I'm going to go to your page and like your recent photos, but I have to be in a good mental space and I don't need to just be scrolling and triggered by something that is going to make me feel not good enough, which we all struggle with at times. I think most people do. So if you are one of those people that you find yourself being a hater, like that's okay that you have those feelings, but use good boundaries. You don't actually have to share them. Unfollow. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I totally agree. And I like, there, there are some people that I haven't followed because like, you know, there's like the, I, I, I don't know. I think for me, like I've had my entire life, such an athletic body. But for yeah. a long time, I thought, like, if you want to compete at Miss USA, you have to be tall and you have to be slender and you have to you know, wear your hair a certain way and you have to do certain things. And so there are certain people that, like, I think if I see too much of them start to convince me of that, like, oh, my God, I need to be skinnier. What am I doing with my life? Why do I look so athletic? So it's like, yeah. no, I, I totally agree, though. Just like, you know, be positive. Keep positive things yes. around you. Be okay. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, so uh, there are tons of people who ask, not just about Miss Universe and Miss USA, but also general questions about competing and our experiences. And so this one person says, hey, I am a huge fan of Olivia Jordan. Please tell me about your transformation in life over the years, especially during your Miss Universe days. Oh, gosh, my transformation in life, y'all. <laughs> tell us your um, life story, Olivia. I, I'm like a lifelong learner. I love expanding um, my views, my ideas. I have always loved like self-help books and um, meditation and, and therapy in my adult life. I like discovered therapy and was like, dang, I have so much to learn about myself and I have so much to unpack and forgive myself for. And mm -hmm. just, so I think that's, I guess the biggest part of my transformation is I'm always working on unpacking who I really am and trying to be the realist version of myself. Um, and I think during Miss Universe, like like you were saying, Chesley, I, I really struggled with the haters. I really struggled with 
people commenting on my body. I gained weight as Miss USA because I wasn't able to work out like I had training for Miss USA because I was really busy being Miss USA. You were everywhere, everywhere busy, all like, over the country. With that whole job thing. Yeah. Um, so I, I really struggled with, with feedback and I really struggled with my own insecurities about myself. So um, I was just trying to survive Miss Universe, honestly. I was... I like a lot of people say they made like the best friendships of their life. They had the best experiences of their life. I was truly, I was not in a good place mentally before I went. I literally was like to Emily, who was our um, manager at the time. I was like, can I be on the last flight out? I don't, I'm so scared. I was so nervous. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So it was, it was a whole thing, but, but then you hear the crowd and you, look at the sash across your chest and you're like, I belong here. The other women are uplifting. They are like encouraging and incredible and motivating. And by the time I walked across stage at finals, I was like, I, I am supposed to be here. This is, this is my destiny and I do get to represent this country. So I guess that's my, my transformation is a lifelong journey of trying to figure out how to love myself and mm -hmm. trying to figure out how to forgive myself and be the meest version of me that I can be. <laughs> I love that. Well, and thank you so much for just being candid because I know there are a lot of people who are listening who really want to hear that, um, especially that it's so important, you know, to be in a healthy mental space. And I love that you talked about, you know, having a therapist and talking to people um, because I think there are so many people who are afraid to say that, like how important it is. Like I have a therapist that I talk to. Um, and it's so important to be able to like talk out your thoughts and, and figure out a strategy and make sure that you're handling your emotions in a positive yeah. way. So people so, so need to hear that. I actually think one of the struggles, like when, partly why I was in such a dark place, when I was Miss USA, I was like, my dreams have come true. My life is good. I'm not mm -hmm. going to call my therapist. And I didn't because I was like, everything's great. Everything's great. Everything's sunshine and roses. But y'all, when you're at the top of the pyramid when you've reached the top of the mountain you still need support you still need to be reaching out to your people whether that's a therapist which obviously we both aren't fans of or those friends that you can have those real authentic conversations and just absolutely have no judgment zone um and I wasn't doing that I wasn't doing any of that <laughs> during my year because I just felt like everything's great and I have to be great and life is wonderful and I made my dreams come true and if it's not great now then it's never gonna be great so mm -hmm. huh, let go of that yeah well and you almost feel guilty too like yeah. if there are points that are tough during your reign you feel guilty about being sad because it's like but you're Miss USA why aren't you happy every day and well it's like well I didn't get to go home and hug my mom for my birthday I'm sad so, yeah. so there, I think that I think people I hope that people know that like when i when I won, I remember, so guys, we have, we have a stylist for the Miss Universe organization and um, the stylist helps to dress us for different events. And so I remember when I won and flew into New York, I think it was like the, the next day or a couple of days after that, I met with the stylist for the first time um, to, to pick out clothing for my media tour. And I remember I had like a meltdown in the style in the dressing room at the Miss Universe offices because like she brought a bunch of dresses and I, I think I just really wanted to wear pants. I was like, I have to wear pants. So she's she's got all these beautiful options. And I was just like, what will people think of me if I wear this? Like I can't I don't know if I can wear this dress right now. Is this stylish enough? And like, you know, you get in your head so much, especially after hearing all that negative talk from people or positive talk from people that's leading you in a different direction. And it can be very, very confusing and overwhelming. So there, you know, if you feel that like it is okay to like be overwhelmed, just make sure that you do something about it. Like talk to somebody, talk about your emotions and make sure you're handling it positively. Yes, for sure. Preach. Yeah. Cause it was, whew, I remember feeling so bad. Cause I was like, I can't, I, I can't wear this. What do you mean? I, and like looking back, I was like, half these outfits are beautiful. I don't know why I couldn't do that. I know. I had so many of those moments. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we got another question in our chat, and I really, really like this question. This one's from Peach Blossom ninety one. She says, "For those of us that are struggling to get in shape, do you have any tips to stay motivated? Love you. Love your positivity, Peach Blossom." Love it. Yes. Wait, I need you to answer this question, Miss Queen of the Abs. <laughs> um, Olivia, I remember watching. 
your abs at Miss Universe and Miss USA. So I'm pretty sure we're in the same boat. <laughs> um, but Sarah, what is your inspo though? How did you, I mean, you are truly the busiest Miss USA ever. How did you continue to train like that? How do you do it? Oh my God, it's crazy. Well, I think, you know, I, I, I was tweeting about this the other day. I was like, how do you stay in shape when you don't have a swimsuit competition ahead of you? Because I think that is the easiest motivation. It's like, I have to be on stage in front of millions of people in a swimsuit. Like, I better go to the gym today. So that was a great piece of motivation. But I think, I think since then, now that I don't have another swimsuit competition to compete in, what's motivated me the most, sorry about the sirens, by the way, guys. It's just, we're in New York and it's loud here. Um, I remember I think that apartment well. It, it, <laughs> It lured me to sleep at night. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's like a lullaby at night, and it's yes. like your alarm clock in the morning is like police <laughs> Um, But I think what, what motivates me now, now that I don't have swimsuit competition, is um, just my own personal feelings of, like, needing to be healthy and needing to be fit. And I say that, like, there are, there are a few days, or a few months, rather, especially after Miss Universe, that I, like, let my diet go. I wasn't working out. I was like, I don't care. I'm trying to enjoy my life. Why would I go to the gym? And I started realizing that it was so hard to get up in the morning. I was so tired all the time. And, like, I couldn't last during events. Mm -hmm. Like, I would get really yeah. crabby. And I just, you know, my mood or my attitude wasn't always positive. Like, I would get distracted and foggy. And I started realizing that a lot of that had to do with wow. me not going to the gym because my mind is just always sharper when I'm going to the gym regularly, not drinking enough water and not nu giving mm -hmm. my body the nutrients that it needed. So really that is my motivation now. It's like, I just want to feel good. And I know that like, yeah. you know, getting the right, you know, food that I need to be eating, making sure that I drink lots of water every day and going to the gym and exercising regularly, even if it's just like a 30 minute walk is really what helps me. What do you think? Yeah, I, everything you're saying is so on point. As soon as I stopped swimsuit modeling, I was like, what's the point? <laughs> but <laughs> so I think I'm in this new phase of life where I'm really focused on wanting to feel healthy, wanting to sleep well at night is major for me. If I don't do anything mm. active, which, you know, I, I've done a few days of like the nine weeks that I've been at home during quarantine, <laughs> but I can't sleep at night. If I don't, mm -hmm. if I don't get out and walk or, um, which I know is harder in New York or, or do an at home workout or yoga or something, dang it is hard to sleep so I work out so I can sleep better and that is my motivation <laughs> <laughs> which is excellent because like you're totally right I, I completely agree I'm usually an excellent sleeper like I sleep a full eight hours nothing wakes right me up. but like the times that I'm not eating right or I'm not working out well like it's just oh, yeah. very bad that's totally those like if I eat the tray of brownies before bed, I'm like, and then you can't sleep because your stomach's like turning. I'm like, why? Did I, mm -hmm. Why? Just have the one brownie. You can have another <laughs> one tomorrow. You can it's eat so it. Hard not Just to. don't eat the whole tray. Yeah, yeah, it's so hard not to. Like yesterday, I was trying to eat cake batter for dinner, and I was like, this is a bad idea. Your stomach's gonna hurt tomorrow. Okay, so you mentioned something that that I know a lot of people are interested to hear about. I'm certainly interested to hear about. You talked about swimsuit modeling and you were in the Sports Illustrated swimsuit search um, recently. How was that? What was it like? I mean, because I remember just watching you after you, you know, finished your reign as Miss USA. And I was like, oh my God, there's Olivia Jordan. She's back on the news. And it was, it was so cool to watch. Oh, thank you. It was awesome. That, um, it's really odd. I'm, I'm writing a book right now. And so I'm looking back on all of these journals and stuff of, years ago and I'm like looking at this journal from 10 years ago where I'm writing that I really want to be Miss USA and um be in the pages of Sports Illustrated Swimsuit and like all of these things that I'm like I I did that that is crazy that is start crazy. tearing up <laughs> it's just wild the, and I like just putting your mind to something and and manifesting it and being so so crystal clear mm -hmm. on goals, I think, um, is life changing. I mean, what they say in the secret and what I learned from the alchemist is the most real thing of, of anything. I, I don't know what to say. Manifesting is a real thing. You can, mm -hmm. if you want something, manifest it, feel it truly and deeply, write it down and work towards it. And I don't know, it could happen. 
Yeah, well, it was, it was so cool to watch. I mean, when you were, because I know you guys did a lot of media, like, what did it feel like going into yeah. the media, talking about it? Did you often talk about your experience as Miss USA? Or did you talk about, you know, modeling beforehand and afterwards? Like, what was that like? It was, um, yeah, it was such a great group of girls that I was with. Um, incredible women have been in the pages of Sports Illustrated through the years. And so that was sort of surreal. Like, we were hanging out with Christy Brinkley and I was like, this is crazy. Like I Unreal. looked up to you my whole life and <laughs> it was just, it was surreal. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the interviews, people definitely had a lot of pageant related questions. I try not to like, people have misguided <laughs> views of what it means to be a pageant queen. Mm -hmm. So I just try to always be as real as possible because I think there's this view that pageant queens are fake or, or totally um, edited down into like this perfection. Mm -hmm. It's not real. So at any time that I was sort of getting pushed in that direction, I just was like, y'all no, I trust me, trust me. I'm a real <laughs> human being that um, this is another huge goal of mine. Um, yeah. So I, I would try not to go too much but it's it's impossible not to be like well these were two of my largest goals career goals um for my life and i have so far achieved both of them and there's still some more on that list that i'm working towards <laughs> but, um but yeah it was it was a very cool experience and it came like i think a couple years after miss usa so it was like cool timing it was mm -hmm. like oh okay that chapter closed okay this new chapter Okay, that chapter closed. Now what's next? Exactly, exactly. Well, and that brings me to another one of my questions, or one of the questions that that um, people sent in. Somebody asked, "What are your lifelong dreams? Like, uh, ultimately, what 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 is your your goal to achieve?" Um, I want to feel happy and free and at peace. I think that's like that's the dream, and mm -hmm. so it's just creating a life that I can have the kind of, you know, financial stability and relationship stability to have all of those feelings be um, at my core. Mm -hmm. um, I'm so lucky to be married to my life partner that I feel like we really push each other to grow. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we push each other um, to be better people and to really go after big career goals. We're we're both actors and that can be a recipe for disaster. But for us, we, we push each other and we help each other and um, encourage each other and we can read scripts together and practice lines together. So um, sweet. I'm so lucky and I would, I would love career wise to be on a show full time. That would be the dream to, to tell people stories and get people to feel something. Cause I think that's, that's what I have gravitated towards my whole life. I love, you know, I love feeling, I love yeah. like feeling alive. I, I enjoy crying. I enjoy laughter. And, um, I got a lot of that from film and television. So I want to like carry it on, pass it forward. I love it. Well, and you're right. You're in the right city for it in, in yeah. LA. Um, you know, right there beside Hollywood. Okay. This what's is a next, really wait, what's next for you? Oh, you're doing a good question. Oh, sorry. I'll, I'll answer that question before I answer this. What's next for me? Uh, so in the immediate future, um, I hope to continue working with Extra because I love doing the work with them. I, I love what you said about, you know, storytelling. I love hearing people's stories. And yes. I think, you know, what's funny is like when I was, when I was competing in my state pageant, Miss North Carolina, USA, um, there was a question that said, how, describe yourself in one word. And I put nosy because literally I am like, all I want to do is like know about behind the scenes stuff. Like this session right now is just feeding my soul to hear about like behind the scenes stuff from like, your experience is Miss USA. And so I think being an extra correspondent, that's all I ask people about, like what are their lives like? And, you know, mm -hmm. what ripping thing, ripping the sort of facade off of the front and sort of seeing what's inside is, is, is really, really cool to me. So hopefully that's, that's I love that. Yeah. Okay, so I love this question because yes. I didn't even think about this, that like Pia is from the Philippines, who is Miss Universe while you were Miss USA. And Catriona is also from the Philippines, who was my, um, my first Miss Universe before you got Zosie. And so somebody said, did Pia and Catriona make you Filipino food? <laughs> um, I will say we didn't cook ever in our apartment. 
ever. There, it just, it never happened. It was, mm -hmm. a, it was a goal and an aspiration at times, but nah, we didn't yeah. cook. Did you cook? Oh, that's Did you the thing. Like I would cook, I, I would cook breakfast for myself. And that's yeah. only because like, when I was trying to diet, and that's only like when, when you know, when you're here, when you're not on the road. But, uh, you know, when I thought about breakfast, like, you can't have cereal because, like, too many calories and, you know, sugar and stuff. Like, can't have, you know, waffles or whatever because the syrup and everything. So I'm like, what can I make? So all I ate every day was, like, egg whites and spinach, and it just made me sad. So that's really all that I would make. Um, but there were a few times when, um, when Kat would come back from the Philippines and she would bring stuff. And so there was once that she brought chocolate covered mangoes, which was amazing. I had those in the Philippines and they were oh, amazing. I'm so jealous. And I just, and she brought back like a couple different kinds of them. And I was like, is this like a thing? Because I'm obsessed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was really, really cool. So, yeah, so that was so probably fine. Yeah, that was one of the things I thought was really cool. Um, okay, so a couple of people have asked the same question, so I want to make sure that we get to it. Somebody says, how to manage and not compare yourself to other girls in pageants um, with regard to physical beauty, skills, and, and other traits. What do you think? I think, um, yeah, I think it goes back sort of to, like, my, like, don't follow people on Instagram. Like, mm -hmm. don't – it's not it's not a comparison thing. I – um, you have to focus on yourself. I don't know. Like I, I don't, this isn't very solid advice. Cause I'm just like, just don't do it. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's not helpful. It's not going to serve you. Mm -hmm. Um, it doesn't matter what anyone else is doing. You can 1 million percent be wearing the same color as someone in your finals gown or the same bathing suit or it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. There have been times that I've seen the top five, like all in gold. I don't know if that's real, but you know what I mean? Like there, there's so many that times that I feel like it, don't worry about it. Don't yeah. worry about what she's doing. Focus on you, mm -hmm. enjoy your experience. And I promise you will have so much more fun and be so much less stressed out because you cannot control her. Mm -hmm. She's going to be great. And she's going to kill it because yeah. she won her country <laughs> or she won her state or whatever it is. Like she's, mm -hmm. trust me, she's worried about her and that's, going to serve her so you worry about you because that's what's going to serve you exactly exactly and yeah I think it goes back to to what we were talking about I think I think people sometimes or at least I started to think that like you would get to a certain point in time in life and like now you're fully confident all the time you never compare yourself to anyone and you're just happy every day and that's just not true that's like it's, yeah when it's, do we get there yeah right I'm like <laughs> when, when do I stop caring about people's opinions is that like I a thing so, uh, so I hope you guys know that, like, at least for, for me, and I, I um, let me know if you agree, Livia, like, you, it's something you constantly have to do. It's like, okay. Remind. I'm yeah. looking at her, and she's beautiful. She's amazing. She has great hair, great skin, great teeth, and she is great all on her own. And that's fine, but I'm different. I look different. I sound different. And we're both great people in our own um, spaces. And I don't think that ever comes, like, naturally. I think there really are some times where you literally have to just, like, shut off your brain for a second and say, like, okay, stop with the comparison and just, and just know that, that everybody's unique and different. And that's, that's a good thing. Yes. Yes. And thank goodness. Like, thank goodness that we all are there to be ourselves and that everyone's not carbon copies of what we're like trying to put ourselves in this weird box. Don't put yourself in a box. Exactly. Break your box and everyone's going to do great. Right. <laughs> exactly exactly because I, I you know if like we like if we think about cat for example and her lava walk we never would have gotten a lava walk if cat was looking at all the other miss universe and was like okay i have to walk exactly like them you know yeah, we never would have gotten imagine? zozy and her take like taking up space if she was like okay i'm just yes. gonna look at like former miss universes and see what all they said yes. that's what, like you have to be unique the world would not be the same world without the lava walk and without our Miss Universe being the fierce, absolute female empowerment superhero that she is. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So just be, be different, be unique. And sometimes you have to actively remind yourself of that. And that's, that's okay. And that's okay. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Okay, let me, I'm looking on a few of these questions. Oh, I like this question. Okay, this one is from Miss Oklahoma, USA. She says, who is your biggest inspiration? Oh, my God. 
Hey, who's your biggest inspiration? My mom. I was trying to think of like somebody you guys know, but like my mom's really my biggest one. Um, but I feel like, you know, everybody can say that your mom is. Um, but I, I think besides my mom, God, I don't know. Like, I, I, I think there were so many people who inspired me at different times, whose stories I would hear about and listen to about them overcoming challenge or working really hard um, or, or whatever it was. And like, I think, you know, my, um, sort of inspiration came from a mix of a lot of different people and things. So it's kind of yeah. hard to answer. That's normal. Yeah. Um, mine, this, my pageant coach would always say that I'm not allowed to say it because everyone says it, but Oprah is my biggest inspiration. And I'm going to say it because I'm not in pageants anymore. Yes. Um, I think like, I don't, I don't want her career. I don't want her life, but I look at her and I see someone so authentically connected to themselves and to the world and to every human being that they interact with that it's it's the most inspiring she just shows me how limitless you can be and how limitless life can be like just there there's no limit to what we can do she is the biggest banner child of that yeah. and has overcome of course so much to get there and yeah that's that's goals to me, like yeah. just being that authentic and real and, and just doing you and keep mm -hmm. going, just keep going. Yeah. Yeah. And refusing to like allow people outside to sort of limit her because, you know, obviously she was a talk show host, but then like she did acting as well. And she started, um, you know, own the, on, on TV and she's got her own magazine and she does philanthropy. She has a school in Africa for, for young girls and like, it's like Oprah woke up one day and was like, is there anything else that I would like to do that I haven't done yet? Because I guess I'll do that now <laughs> because yeah, like it's Oprah, she can do whatever. So yeah, it, it is inspiring sort of seeing um, everything that she's done and how successful she's been. So yeah, that's really cool. She's an amazing one. Okay, so I'm, I think, okay, it looks like we have time for like two more questions. Um, oh, this is an interesting question. Somebody says, do you think that sash power is an actual thing? I guess like sash factor. So if there's a, like not any, if there are any people on here who aren't like familiar with pageants, like there's this like theory that there are certain states or sashes that are very powerful. And when they get to like national competitions or international competitions, they always do well. And it's because like everybody knows where this person is from. So what do you think? This is, it's kind of hard to unpack because the reality is, is that sometimes the sash factor that you see are people that have had more access to sponsorships to coaching to wardrobe um <clears throat> they've been in pageants longer mm -hmm. um so they've had more years of experience so it's hard to put a country that has had all of that against a country that a girl maybe competed against you know 20 other women to win mm -hmm. that title and it was her first pageant and she has no sponsorships no real coaching and shows up the same. So it's really hard to say like that Sash Factor doesn't matter, mm -hmm. but I will say as a judge, I am not looking at like a certain country because they're a certain country. Um, I'm looking at the women in front of me. Now, do some people have leg ups because of the opportunities they had before we got there? Sure, yeah. But it's for me, it's not like a Sash Factor like that such and such country is going to be in the top five because they're that country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. Different? Do you have a different perception? Or? Yeah, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I was looking at this question and I was like, huh, that, do they, but, but for me, it's like two things. Number one, I totally agree in that there's just certain, there's certain, you know, franchises that have a lot of resources and continually pour those resources into their representatives. And so you end up seeing some very successful people because it's like every year they do these three things and they have these people that they get to talk to. So it's like, yeah, they end up doing well, but that's not because the judges were like, Oh, this person always does well, or this state or this country always does well. And so we need to make sure that they're in the top. It's just like, that's what, like, I remember when I was for my state, um, RPM was our, is our, um, the people, the, company that owns like North and South Carolina, Louisiana, and Alabama. And every year they would bring all of the um, state title holders and, and teen state title holders to this retreat. And they bring in people. We talk to people. There's so, there's so much information we get. 
Um, we get to talk to sponsors. And so every year we see that. And so every year you, you start to see um, people who have these resources and um, some end up doing really well. But beyond that, I think people forget like who the judges are. Like you were a judge um, for prelims at Miss Universe this year, but like at Miss USA, we had a couple of Miss Universes and then most everybody else were like business people. And it would shock me. Like one of our, for example, one of the, our judges was like the mayor of Reno, I think. It would shock me if the mayor of Reno was like looking at different sashes and was like, okay, this person usually does well year after year for 10 years, they've done well. I know that they need to be like, they, they don't know. These are, these are usually like pageant experts. So that, yeah, I think that sort of destroys this idea of like all these states are always going to do well, or all these countries are going to do well, because even the judges don't usually even know about these, these sort of belief about sash factor. Yeah. To you're spot on with that. Yeah. Okay. So that was a good question. Let me see if we've got another one, another good one on here. Oh, these are so sweet. So a lot of these questions we've actually already answered. Oh, I love this one. This would be a cool one. Okay, so Kerwin Liberty. Oh my says, gosh, I almost just lost it because I have a time limit on my Instagram. Oh no. So I don't stay on social media all day. And it just told me that I'm kicked off for the day. Whew, that was <laughs> touch and go. I said, ignore it for today. Sorry. Oh, that would have been so scary. Oh my God. <laughs> Well, and we're, we actually do have a limit on our live because I know I think they limit them at 60 minutes, so we would get kicked yes. off soon anyways. Yes. <laughs> okay, so let's make this the final question then. So Kerwin Liberty says, Olivia, do you still have your Miss Universe dress? Oh my gosh, so many people ask me this. I am, I'm a, I'm a budgeter. I really don't <laughs> like to spend money. I really, 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 really like to save money. I like to make money. Um, so I don't have any of my dresses. I don't have oh, really anything. Most of them I didn't own to begin with. Like I, <laughs> I pretty much everything that during my Miss US year, a year was borrowed, um, rented, a stylist put it on me. Um, so I don't own anything. I have no memories. I did, um, Sherry Hill gifted me the pink ball gown which Aww. I then um, auctioned to um, the one of those charity things to raise money for Glisten. And as a surprise, my friend that, that was our wedding officiant, um, Jim Fielding, ended up buying the gown to support Glisten, but then to store it because he was like, I didn't want it to leave the family. I want you to have it back someday. So... That was like a sweet surprise. So one day, maybe I'll have my pink ball gown back. But in the meantime, Jim's holding on to it. <laughs> Praise the Lord, because I don't have that much extra closet space around here. Oh, but yeah, I couldn't imagine trying to like put that in the closet somewhere. Right? <laughs> maybe like 10 Do years you have your now. dresses? Do you have stuff? Yeah, yeah. So I still have, I still, I think in the closet here, actually, I have the my prelim and finals gown from Miss Universe. And then my USA gown. Um, I think uh it's either at my mom's house or i uh loaned it to my sponsor mackenzie jade they're the, the dress sponsor that paid for my dress for miss usa and so she's got my teen's uh dress on display in her store and i, I remember us talking oh, about like cool. oh we'd love to put this on display and so it's at one of those two places i remember leaving it at my mom's house to get it to mackenzie so if that happened it's at, mackenzie, or it's at my mom's house I just saw someone ask, do you still have your Miss USA sash? Yes. I'm not a total, like, I don't like just throw away things, by the way. <laughs> like I have, I have my sash. We have like this little tiara that's like a memento. I have my state crowd. I'm not, I don't throw things away. I just, when I don't own things, I don't get to keep them. <laughs> Yeah, because you guys, I forgot that you guys get like little, you got like little tiaras after you won. Do you get a crown? Um, so I think we might end up getting something from the new crown sponsor, but since we wore the Mickey Motos, there aren't, there aren't tiaras for us. So right, of course. I'm going to get one of those tiaras, which I understand. I mean, I still got to wear the Mickey Moto for a little bit, so I was still happy about that. The so sash is really what it's all about. The mm -hmm. sash is the memory. You're yeah. like, I, you became a dear friend of mine. I wore you often. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you so much, Olivia, for being on here. Seriously, like the advice that you have for everybody. I know that there are so many people I've been looking at some of the comments. There's so many people who appreciate it, especially just being so candid and so vulnerable with people. So appreciate you and appreciate your time being on here. So thank you. I appreciate you, girl. You are such a light. You have been the most 
unbelievable Miss USA. You have had challenges on top of challenges. I cannot imagine anyone handling this quarantine life like you have. You have been shining and spreading your light and beautiful smile and staying positive. You're allowed to feel all the feels, but I also appreciate you ha having moments where you're sharing this with us. Thank you. Oh, you're thank a light. Thank you so much. <laughs> See, this is why everybody loves you. The people's queen, y'all. Olivia. Oh, stop. <laughs> Well, thanks again. We'll talk oh soon. Oh my gosh. Take care of yourself. Hope I get to hug you soon. Same, same, same. I'm hugging you virtually till then. <laughs> yes. See ya. Bye, girl. Oh my gosh, guys. That was amazing. So amazing to be able to talk to Olivia Jordan. Seriously, she's incredible. And I hope you guys can see why, you know, she's one of the people that I love talking to um, and love, you know, just hearing insight from because she's incredible and she's always so vulnerable and so candid. So again, hope you guys appreciate our discussion. Um, we've got another great discussion coming this Thursday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I will see you guys then.